Hello, what is up guys? It's Evil Duos Arm here, back with another Blade and Soul video. So today's video is a little bit different than the usual type of video where I like give you an idea on how to progress your character or get further in the game or better your character or maybe just make you laugh a little bit at one of my terrible runs in a dungeon. Today's video is going to be catered towards a completely new player who literally just downloaded Blade and Soul and has no idea what they're doing or how to even get started or, or wants to start off on the right foot. You know, hit the ground running and really take off in Blade and Soul. Now if you are a seasoned veteran of the channel and watched a lot of videos, you still might find something useful in this video as well, so make sure to stay tuned, or don't, I'm not your dad, you do you. But anyway, if you are new to Blade and Soul or new to the channel, please consider subscribing as I have a ton of guides on Blade and Soul, ton of different content, and new content comes out relatively frequently. So please consider subscribing as it does mean a lot to me. Anyway, without further ado, let's get into it. So when you first load into Blade and Soul, this is the screen you're going to be looking at. There won't be two characters here, obviously. You only have two character slots available. I went to one of my alt accounts. It has very limited playtime on it, just to show you. Um, you'll just see this Create a New Character option located on the right side of your screen. So to get started, you're going to want to go ahead and click on Create a New Character and Create Character. So currently in Blade and Soul, there are 11 different classes spread out amongst four different races. So Jinns are the like human class. They've got the most human-like features and human-like scale. You have giant humans in the Gon section, and then you have your elves in the Yun section. Note that Yuns can only be female, so you can't be a male elf in this game, sorry. And then you have Lins, which are like your human-animal hybrid sort of race in the game. They have all sorts of different ears and tails, and you can pick any type of rat that you want to be. But anyway, these races provide no different bonuses to your character whatsoever. You're not getting anything between a Gon Kung Fu Master or a Gon Force Master and a Yun Force Master. They have the same exact stats, it's purely based on the appearance, so pick an appearance that you like, and then pick the class based on that, whichever class is available to that race. Simply because you're going to be playing your character a lot, so you better like how they look. So for this example, we're going to go ahead and create a Yun, and we're going to create a Force Master, and click Next. So at this point, you can check the appearance and change the appearance of your character, there's so many different options you could spend all day here if you wanted. The other thing you can do as a player is look around on the internet and click this Manage Appearance button. In this Manage Appearance button, you can upload a different appearance for a character here, and you can just import the appearance. So there's appearances all over the internet, so if you just wanted to go ahead and find one that you like, click Apply, and boom, you can instantly apply that appearance and go ahead and play with the character. For more information on that, I have a video linked in the description below, so you go ahead and click that. I also have the link to all of my presets that I've shared, so you can just copy one of my presets and play as an Evil Duos Arm character. Now isn't that awesome? Anyway, so at this point you would normally just hit next and pick your server and go on into that. But we're not going to do that because what we're going to do is actually look at a way to try out any class in the game at max level so you can experience all the different skills at it and decide if you want to actually play as that class. This is a super awesome feature that was added in the game and it's great for a new player who's just getting into Blade and Soul to try out all the different classes, decide which one they like the most, and then pick that class to play as. So what you're going to want to do to do that is going to be create a new character and hit create character. You're then going to want to pick whatever you're going to be, so let's just do Jin Blade Master. Click Next, we're just going to go with the default image here, pick a server, and when we get to this point, you're going to go ahead and click this Level 60 Boost Voucher. And because this is just testing, we're going to give myself a random name, I actually think that's too many characters, but sure. So click Complete Creation while making sure this Level 50 Voucher Boost is selected. When you actually go to create your character, make sure you do not select this voucher. So you're going to want to you know, go through all the designing of your character and all that, then click this level 60 voucher and hop into the game. When you actually make your character that you want to play as, when you decide which class you want to do, click the level 1, otherwise you won't be able to play as the character after you get through this little training thing. So anyway, click complete creation and hit confirm and head on in. You're not going to have a level 50 character and be able to start the game with the level 50 character. So just go ahead and click the start game button at the bottom. So after it's done loading, you're going to pop up to this menu right here and just mash through, confirm all of these because you don't really care. And actually you were supposed to hit skip on that last one, but that's okay. So it's going to put you through a little tutorial that makes you pick up an outfit. And you're going to read this letter, read the letter, pick up the outfit, and then it's going to make you break down a boulder. After you put the outfit on, you're going to go ahead and break down a boulder. And it's going to tell you to run over to this, and then you're going to jump and glide. And basically it's just going to give you the general like movement abilities here. After you're done gliding down to this menu, it's going to tell you to run up the wall. You can just run up the wall by holding down the shift key and then pressing W. And eventually you'll end up at this little location right here. After you get to this location, you're going to press M on the keyboard, and it's going to show you this Hongmoon training room. So you just go ahead and click on the Hongmoon training room. So M, and then click on this little green icon that pops up on your screen to go to the Hongmoon training room. You could have skipped all this by clicking the skip button that was on the menu that I accidentally mashed through on accident. Once you arrive in the Hongmoon training room, you're going to step into this green circle, and it's going to teach you all of your character skills. So this is going to say one of my combos is Q, then left, 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 a left mouse button. 
So uh, basically it's going to walk you through all the different possible combos for the character so you can try them out and see how you enjoy the character. After completing this one it's going to say, congrats, would you like to go to the next training? You would say yes, go to the next training. And then you're going to learn a different combo. Q, oh it's Q right click that time, not left click, see I screwed up. Q, right click, left click, right click, left click, right click, left click, and it's combination. So it's basically teaching you all the different combos that's available to the character. If you click select training, if you click select training, you can hit confirm and go to this dungeon tab and pick any one of the bosses in the game and try the character against the boss. So if I wanted to see all this character skills, how they work against this guy, I could show you like this. Boom, boom, boom. And I'm going ahead and finding the boss just like that. So you can actually try out any single character in the game against any one of the bosses in the game before you actually even start playing the character. So at this point, you can't create the character unless you spend $60. So we're not going to do that. Obviously, we don't feel like spending that kind of money. So at this point, what you want to do is try a different character. So what you do is you click the change character button at the bottom and go back and click change character. And this is going to load you back into the character selection menu. All you do is delete this character that you just made and make a new level 60 character and try a different class. So you can try out every single class in the game before you even start. You can try it out at max level so you have all the skills unlocked and can try out all the combos. The game teaches you all the combos. So if you didn't know what the combo was for the class, just go through the trainings. It's a great way to experience every single class in the game. So just like this, click on the character, click delete character, type in delete, and in five minutes you'll be able to do it again. Now because you'll have two character slots when you first get going, you can delete the one character, start the next character slot, then when that one's done, delete that, switch back to your new open slot, and go back and forth until you've experienced all the characters you want to try, and you can pick your favorite. Now the other thing that I didn't show you is that if you went through all the trouble to create a character, you can actually save your character appearance, so I'll show you how to do that in a second on a different character. So let's say that you went through all the trouble of designing a character but then decided, you know what, I don't like that hairstyle or I want to switch it. Rather than play the game and get like four hours into it and be like, man, I don't like that hair, or rather than just have to start the whole creation process again, just delete the character but save the appearance first and then you can load the appearance in that manage appearance menu that I showed you earlier. Load that appearance in, change the one feature that you want to change, and then load back into the game. This is a great thing to do while you're trying out all the different classes is like design a character that you're going to want to play as. Then try out all the different classes and then each time you try out a class, save your appearance and change whatever feature was bothering you when you got into the game. Um, anyway, to do that, you're going to go ahead and hit the escape key on the keyboard and navigate to this photo gallery option. It's in the right side. It's in the system menu list over here. Over here, what you're going to do is click the save appearance button right here. Click the save appearance button and then just click save. And just like that, this picture is going to be added to your save appearance menu. You saw this menu when I popped into the game when I was showing you it at first. It's got all the appearances that I've saved throughout the years. So you can just click the apply button when you get in there, apply that same appearance, and then go ahead and edit like if you wanted to change the hair, and then go try your next class. So that's how you save your character's appearance. Likewise, if you've got an awesome character and want to share it with the world, that's how you do it. Save appearance, pull the picture, and upload it on the internet somewhere. So let's say we've created the perfect preset, we've gone through all the different iterations and we're ready to go. So when you're ready to go, you've tried every class, you've decided what you want to do, create a new character, create character, whatever you're going to do, I guess for this video we're going to do a Jin Assassin, we're going to hit next, and we're going to use a preset because I have all these presets saved, so let's use my Evil Duos Arm preset. Click next and pick your server and name your character whatever you're going to name it. So we're going to do evil do us harm 2. <laughs> Complete creation. Yes, I want to create a level 1 assassin evil do us harm 2. And just go ahead and hit start game to load on into the game. A cutscene is going to play and then you're going to get dropped off at a location. So you're going to be met by our good friend right here. And I can't even remember her name. How embarrassing is that? So anyway, you're just going to mash up through her thing and it's going to send you on a series of quests. So this is going to be like our first major point where I'm going to do some explaining here. So on the right side of your screen is going to be your quest log. All of the quests that you have active are going to pop up over here on the right. For the most part, and pretty much for the first like 20 hours, 25 hours of your time playing Blade and Soul, you are going to be doing the main quest line. The main quest line are the yellow quests. If you click this little yellow arrow icon over here, it'll show you where on your map you need to go. On your map, you will see these little green spires. This one will turn green after you actually like progress through a little bit further in the story. But anyway, you'll see these green spires, and they allow you to fast travel to different points. So if you click the yellow icon, and then you can click the fastest, closest fast travel point to move around and progress through the story quicker. But for the most part, always be focusing on these yellow quests. They will show you exactly where you need to go at all times. So watch when I go ahead and pick up this uniform. It's going to say, okay, now I need to press the I key to put on the uniform. So go ahead and press I, put on the uniform talk to this lady again she's got the yellow marker above her head very straightforward and now the yellow marker is going to move so if, like you look at the map as she walks away the yellow marker is going to say walk out the door and walk next door so you see i had to walk to the room next door 
Basically, just follow the yellow marker around and complete everything it tells you to do. There are literally hundreds of these quests in Blade and Soul before you actually complete the main story. They're all tied into the main story. So always be focusing on these yellow quests first. So as you progress through the yellow quests, you'll see I'm up to chapter 15 now, so I've finished 15 of the yellow quests so far on this character. You're going to gain experience points. These experience points fill up the EXP bar that's along the bottom of your screen that you see right here. It's this blue bar. And as you progress this bar, you unlock more skills for your character. These skills show up on your skill bar located below your health and stamina meters. The blue meter is your focus meter, and when you're out of focus, you can't cast any of your skills, or a lot of your skills cannot be cast. Focus is regained with some skills, focus is expended with other skills, so you'll need to learn your rotation that maximizes your damage to focus expenditure ratio. But anyway, for the most part, for maximum efficiency in your leveling for your first 20 or 25 hours of Blade and Soul, basically until you hit level 60, you're only going to want to do yellow quests. You don't want to spend any time bothering with these blue quests. Now, after you do hit level 60 and have completed the story, your blue quests are going to be your daily dungeons that you run every day to get experience, items, and gold, so you're going to be doing blue quests at that point, so don't bother with the blue quests for now, just focus on completing the story as a new player. Now, as you progress through the story, you're going to get different items as rewards for completing the different quests, as well as from enemies that you kill. If you press the I key on the keyboard to open up your inventory, you will see all of the different items that you've picked up along the way. There are several major categories of items, so we're going to go through all of them right now. The first one are cosmetics, your costumes. This is your top row in your inventory, and these are the different outfits that you've unlocked through playing the story. So I've unlocked this Masked Hong Woon outfit. If I take it off, I can go ahead and put on this Ethereal Phantom outfit. So there you go. So that's how you switch through different costumes. There are actual outfits, there's accessories, there's hats, and then there's an additional accessories tab. So you can put in a bunch of different items and customize your character to make yourself look pretty. The next thing to the left over here is going to be your weapon. As you progress through the story, you're going to get progressively stronger and stronger weapons. For example, this stalker bracelet that you see right here, or stalker bracer, I apologize, is what you get for completing like the fifth quest of the story. So you get this item, as soon as you get it, put it on because it's an instant upgrade to the training gauntlets that you've been using previously, or training weapon, whatever your weapon is. Put on the weapon that you got through the story, and you'll see you get an attack power bonus, some bonus stats, and even further still, I got this bamboo bracer, so I put that on, and it has a little bit more accuracy and some more attack power. So this will always be improving your character stats, so always put on your new weapons as you get them from the story. The next thing you'll notice is that this one has these little slots right here that are gem slots. As you progress through the story, as well as complete surveys that will pop up in the bottom of your screen, you're going to get different gems. These gems can be placed on your character at any time or on the weapon at any time, so long as you have gem slots available. It's really simple. You just click it and click it in. So just drop gems into your weapons whenever you get them. Now make sure you take the gems off before you switch weapons because like I want to take that off and then I switched to my new weapon I just got but I forgot to take my gems and put them in there. Oops, so now I lost that gem. So make sure that you always take that gem off before you switch weapons. Otherwise you might lose it and risk forgetting about it. The next tier of accessory are your basic accessories. So you have the ring, earring, necklace, and bracelet. These accessories drop from enemies that you kill, you also get them as quest rewards. Basically equip whatever you get for completing different quests throughout the story. So if you get a new ring, it's better than the ring you currently have, so put it on. This will hold true all the way until you get to like level 60, where you have to start farming different dungeons, at which point you'll be checking out the other guides on my channel that show you how to get all the different and better accessories in the game. The next row is going to be your belt, gloves, mystic badge, and soul badge. These are end game items, and you have no concern for these as a new player. You'll be picking these items up, you'll get some gloves and belts as you progress through the story, but as far as Mystic Badge and Soul Badge, you're going to have to do quite a bit of stuff late game to be picking up these items. They basically unlock your character's true potential and give you different skill rotations that make you do even more damage. The final tier are your like aura items, I guess would be the best way to describe it. You have a soul, you have a heart, you have a pet, and you have a talisman. These items provide even more bonus stats and once again are late game items. You will however get a soul, heart, pet, and talisman. For completing the story, so you do have that to look forward to. The final item that we have as an upgrade item over here is going to be your soul shield. Soul shield pieces are given for progressing through the story. Every 10 or 15 levels or so, you're going to get an entirely new soul shield set. When you get that soul shield set, just put the pieces on immediately. They're always an upgrade as you get it. They look like this, they come in boxes, you right click the box, it gives you all 8 pieces, and you just drop the pieces in just by clicking on them from your inventory. You see they just slot right in. Your soul shield basically is like your armor in this game, since you can put on whatever outfits you want. Your actual defensive stats are dictated by the soul shield set. So your HP, your armors, your defenses, your evasions, all of that 
fall into this soul shield instead of the different armors that you would put on, which lets you customize the appearance of your character without worrying about the sacrificing of your stats. We all know that fashion is the true end game of any MMO. So anyway, just to recap right there, equip all of the different items that you get as you progress through the game, as well as focus entirely on completing the yellow quest line all the way through level 60. So we're now in a character that's progressed even further in the story, this character's up to level 55, and we're going to look at a few more systems that you're going to unlock as you progress further through the game. The first one is going to be this K menu, the Martial Tome. In the Martial Tome, if you uncheck this option that says View Enhanceable Skills, you will see all of the different skills you've unlocked in the game. Every single one of these skills has an associated level that you unlock it at, so you can see how you're progressing your character and what skills you have to look forward to if you are into that. Additionally, you can click this little button down here, it shouldn't say simple, if you hit shift F3 that'll turn off simple mode and turn simple mode on. Simple mode just makes it so your right mouse button does your main DPS rotation. If you turn that off and go back to regular BNS mode, you will see a view icon. It shows you every single skill that's associated with every single button, so it's easier to find what skills you're looking for or what different things are like that. Also, if you hit this Hongmoon training room, it'll take you back to that same training room that we started at at the very start of this video where we were trying out all the different characters. So if you want to practice your combos or try out your combos at any given time in the game, you can do that at any time by going to the Hongmoon training room or pressing the F12 key on your keyboard. Those will both send you to the Hongmoon training room. So once you hit around level 55, if you look in your quest letters by pressing the J key on the keyboard and head over to this quest letters, you're going to see some orange quests as well as purple quests pop in here. So, the Legacy of the Hongmoon Clan is a purple quest that I cover in the Awakening Patch video, which the link is in the description as well. But basically, you're going to want to do this as soon as possible because it's going to unlock the ability to customize your character, which I'll show you on a different character in a second. But I want to show you, though, here is these orange quests. So these are going to pop up in the quest letter section, and once you accept it, it'll pop over your in progress section. These orange quests are basically like mini story quests, and you're going to want to complete them as they pop up. You can do them all the way up to the quest that basically has a reward item down here and a really large amount of gold. This really large amount of gold is what you get for completing the raid, and you can't complete a raid by yourself, so do these quest lines up until you get to the quest that has a lot of gold as a reward. But yeah, these quests are great amounts of experience and give you some pretty strong items, so you always should be doing them. They're like continuations of the story or branch offs of the story, so yeah, make sure you're doing them in conjunction with the yellow quests as they pop up. Now another quest you're going to want to do in this quest journal, which once again you get to by pressing the J key on your keyboard, is going to be the wind walking quest. So you see these wind walking and skills option, the long and prosper, or live long and prosper is the one I'm up to right now. When you first start playing right around level 15, you're going to get one of these that pops up over here. Make sure you do this every single time that it's up. So just be looking, you're going to get a pop up on your screen that says, want to know more about wind walking? Read the letter. It's going to pop up on your screen read the letter and complete the quest. So to read the letter, you'd literally just click that little icon right there and it'll pop up a letter. So doing those quests unlocks different mobility skills for your character. Some of them increase your stamina bar. Some of them allow you to do jumps over walls. It allows you to run up walls. So always be doing those because they're going to be necessary for later game dungeons. You're going to want to do them now rather than have to backtrack and find out where the heck that was at certain points in the game. So we are nearing the end of the video of what you should be doing, and the last thing I really want to show you are the last couple of things are going to have to be level 60 to actually experience. So once you hit level 60, you're going to see your meter down here turn to gold instead of blue. This is because you now are in the prestige level system, or as this game calls it, the Hongmoon leveling system. If you press P on your keyboard, it's going to take you over to the Hongmoon points tab, and from this Hongmoon points tab, you can basically customize your character a little bit further by putting in these mastery points that you get from up here as you progress this Hongmoon level. So completing the story to completion is going to put you right around Hongmoon level 12, which means you will have 60 points to divvy up however the heck you want. I'd recommend splitting them between offense, defense, and health regen as a new player because those are going to give you the best boost to your character for the least amount of investment. But as you get more advanced in the game, you could try things like movement speed or HM focus or threat if you're a tank uh, to really enhance your character's capabilities. The other thing I want to show you when you get out to this point is when you press K and you complete that one purple quest, it's going to unlock this talents menu. I go over more of this in a little bit more detail in the awakening video, but basically this is how you spec different skills on your character. So if you wanted to do like this version of that skill plus that version plus this version, th this is how you do that. You can read through the different effects and see what skills they amplify or de-amplify. I guess make worse would be the correct word right there. But you can see what they do, see the pros and cons of them all over here on the right side of the screen. So this is how you really, really hone in your character's customization. You'll also unlock two different specs as you progress through the story. So you've got a Destruction spec and an Undertaker spec for the Gunslinger class. Every single class has two different specs to choose, so you pick which one, try them out in the training room by pressing F12 once again, see which one you like the best, and then go with it as you progress through the story. 
One final thing to note is that you always want to be doing your daily and weekly challenges that pop up on the right once you reach level 60. So look for quests that are pretty easy to complete. They are denoted by the one star icon right here. Two stars are a little bit harder and three stars are a lot harder and probably unreachable. My recommendation for a daily challenge to do every single day is going to be Brawl in the Basin, Celestial Basin, Midnight Sky Pedal Plains, and then any one of the one stars that's up here. They're usually pretty simple. But anyway guys, that is basically it. You are now level 60 if you've been following this right along and been playing through the story. I've gotten you all the way there. You've got everything you need to know to be able to hit level 60 in stride. Once you've hit level 60, you're going to want to check out my first things to do after the awakening patch, as well as first things to do after level 60 videos. Both of those have links in the description below. Anyway guys, thank you so much for watching. I hope you found this video useful. If you did, make sure to leave a like, check out some of the other videos on the channel, and make sure you're subscribed so you stay updated when new content comes to the channel. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you at the next video. Peace.